The next step is to start making our actual 3D information. So let's hide our layers and create the depth map for this background image. So we'll create a new layer. And how we do this, let's see. Things that are further away are darker. So in a sense we could make that wall black, making it as furthest away possible. But as explained on Russell Brown's show, it helps to just bring these colours in a bit. So almost black and bring it almost to white at the front. So let's see. This wall we're going to push to the background. So we'll fill in with an almost black. Bring that up a little. Fill that in. There we go. And this floor is obviously slanted in, in the depth way. So it matches that distance at the join of the floor to the wall and comes all the way up to nearly white. So we'll select that area. Choose this with the picker. Let's see. That colour there. And we'll take it to an almost white and we'll use the gradient tool to fill in this floor pattern. There we go. And you can see that that slowly gets brighter, which indicates the floor gets nearer and nearer as we get closer. So that's the depth map done for the background layer. Now that we've got the depth map, we can actually create a 3D mesh from it using the extended 3D menu. Mesh from grayscale and right now that looks a bit weird, but don't worry. The first thing we need to do is take the color information from the background layer. So select all of the background layer, copy it, and we're going to paste this into the diffuse map of the 3D mesh. Double click to open it, paste, and then close and say yes to save. Okay, there we go. We've now actually got a 3D colored mesh of our background. So we can hide our original 2D background now. And if I move this around, you might just be able to tell that it's actually got some real 3D information. So let's position this a little more sensibly. Let's see, something like that. That'll do fine. You probably noticed the image get a little bit darker when we went for this process, but it's not a problem. We just need to tell the 3D layer not to use lighting. So go to your 3D tab, the render settings, and change this style from solid rendering to unlit textured. Ah, there we go, back to our original brightness. Okay, now let's start putting our layers in. Uh, we'll do the apple first select that layer and we need to create a 3D postcard from layer. And again with all your other layers. The final step in this process is to set each layer's depth information. This can be a little bit tricky but the way I do it is by turning on the red blue 3D view. So for each layer go to the render settings, turn on the stereo red blue and set the parallax to something sensible for your lenticular printouts. In my case a parallax of 40 works very well. Each layer the same setting and you'll notice with the background when we turn this on we should get some easy viewable 3D information. Brilliant! All that's left is to set the depth levels of our two 3D layers. So, select a layer, bring up its settings, and this can be a little bit trial and error, but you're trying to match the separation in red and blue of your pillar that, to the surrounding background. So this is slightly poking into the screen by the look of it. So we'll try minus 10. 
That looks about right. Brilliant. Of course, you can always check this with uh, red and blue glasses, but it doesn't really work very well when you have color images. Uh, and so we'll do the same for the apple. This is going into the screen slightly, so we'll try 10 again. But that looks about right. So I'll have a look for my 3D glasses. Oh yeah, that's not too shabby. That'll do nicely. And of course, to print this out onto your lenticular sheets, you need to obviously set it to lenticular rendering. So for each layer, change the red and blue to vertical interlace. Make sure you set your lenticular spacing to the type of printout. This may take a while for each level because it's have to do quite a bit of calculation. There we go, we can see it doing its job. Fantastic, and you probably want to crop your image to something sensible. Cropping will take a little bit of time. There we go, our finished lenticular image. As you can see from the edges of things like the pillar, you can see that there are bits of the apple showing through. And that indicates that when we tilt our head to look slightly round this pillar on the final printout, you'll be able to see a little bit more of the apple, which is where this technique shines. A possible improvement to this technique would be to add additional depth maps for each of our 3D layers. This is something I haven't tried, and I imagine getting the depth values would be somewhat complicated, but it would probably result in the best possible 3D image from a 2D image. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this useful, and good luck making your own 3D images. Bye bye.